Amen. I'm so thankful that he prays for me when I don't have a prayer. And he does for you too. And I'm thankful to know that he's alive today and he's alive forevermore. I appreciate the good songs this morning. I really love that victory was won at Calvary. Folks, we can already, we ought to be living a victorious life. Now that is Canaan land, by the way. That's a picture of Canaan, a victorious life. Folks, we can have it today if you trust Jesus. It takes him. And I appreciate our Sunday school this morning. If you missed Sunday school, let me tell you, you missed an important part of the service. And I want to go ahead and just take a sec to encourage you to come to Sunday school. But in Sunday school this morning, Brother Sammy, well, Brother Scott opened up. And uh, he opened up on uh, putting pep. Folks, we need some pep in our step. Well, <laughs> victory has already been won. Folks, we need to have, nobody wants to drag, uh, somebody be dragging around, be draggy all the time. And, and, and Brother Sammy was teaching, and, and I, he mentioned something about the table's already prepared. It's already in front of us. God has already prepared a table for you and I to us to be able to come and dine at. There's no excuse to walk around here hungry anymore. There's no, folks, well, we, we need to quit snacking on the chips of this world. Amen. We need to quit eating the candy of this world and get in the Word of God where there's, new, where there's no nutrition. Amen. For He'll help you. And then Brother Scott mentioned, and I, I'm not trying to give you Sunday school all over again, but I, I thought it was some important parts. And, and Heather just sung about it, about Satan wanting to sift Peter is wheat. Now, he, Scott mentioned this, and he not only wants to sift Peter, but he wants to sift you and I. Now, if you're making biscuits, you take that flour and you sift it, and today well, we're trying to add air to it to make our bread fluffier. But that's not why you sift wheat. That's not why you sift flour. What you're trying to find in that flour, it's the bugs that's in there. It's those things that don't belong in the flour that you need to get out of there to enable you to eat those biscuits. I don't like eating bugs. But I like biscuits. And Satan wants to, see, he's not doing you a favor. He wants to expose the bad things in our lives. But you know what? God knows. And we bring them to him. We give those things to him. It doesn't matter what Satan does. God will forgive you. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yeah. And this morning, I'm going to ask you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter number 40. And as you're turning, has anybody... Have ever had so many things come at you at one time that there wasn't enough of you to take care of it all? Have you ever felt like at a time that instead of drinking from God's saucer, we're trying to take a sip from a fire hydrant? It's just impossible. We get all these things coming at us. We get all these things pressing down upon us. But I want to tell you something. God is bigger than all those things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning to touch our hearts. Lord, not with my words, but with your words. Lord, with your scripture, I pray, Lord, that you may open our hearts, search our hearts, Lord. God, if there's one here that doesn't know you this morning, I pray, God, that you may draw them to you. God, if there's one here that's drawing cold, Lord, I pray. God, that you may stir a heart this morning. God, for we know, Lord, that you're bigger than all these things that we face. And we want to thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. And it's good to see, again, I, I want to say, it's good to see each and every one that's here this morning. It's good to see you. And, and it's good to be able to fellowship in the house of the Lord with other believers. Uh, and I believe that's today we need encouragement. We need to encourage one another. We need to help one another as the days are growing shorter. And I'm not talking about in time, but I'm talking about in God's time. Yeah. And, and here in the book of Isaiah, 
Isaiah, it, it, he, he's magnifying God here. And he's telling you and I about our problems. I want you to notice here in Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 28. He's reminding us, he, he's just telling us, he said, hast thou, hast thou not known? He said, and hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, he said, the Lord, that's Jehovah. He said, the creator, Elohim, of the ends of the earth fainteth not. He said, neither is weary. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you to notice something, for there is no searching of his understanding. Folks, let me say, he knows what you're going through today. He knows what I'm going through today. He knows our heartaches. He knows our burdens. He knows, folks, we, we sung that we'll carry our cross. But I want to tell you something this morning. Yes, today we've got to carry that thing. But I, when we get to heaven, there'll be no more burdens. There'll be no more crosses. There'll just be Jesus and me and you. Hallelujah. He said, don't you know, haven't you heard that he fainteth not, neither is weary, and there's no searching of his understanding? He said, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no, now notice what he says, to them that have no mind. Who's that? That's me and you. That's us. He said to those that have no mind, he said he gives strength. And folks, there's not all the time, but I know yesterday is gone. Tomorrow's ahead, but we need strength for the day. Hallelujah. And God will give it to you if you desire it. If you ask him, he'll give that strength. Oh, he, his mercy is never ending. His grace is sufficient. There, the, there's no way that we'll ever, we'll be able to out, just outdo God. For he's that big. Yeah. And notice here what he says. He's talking here. He's, he's telling you and I that, that he's going to, he doesn't get fatigued. Notice what he said there in 28. He says that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, he said, of the end. Now notice what he said. He created the heavens and earth. Do you believe that? I believe that. Yeah. Hey, if you can't get past Genesis 1 1, you're going to have a problem with the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. For he is the creator. He is the Almighty. He's El Shaddai. He's Elohim. He's the creator God. Yeah. And folks, he created you. And he created me. And he knows what we're going through today. He knows our ups. He knows our down settings and our uprisings. He knows all that about you and me. But you know what? Brother Sammy, just like you said, that table's already prepared. That table's already set for you and me to come up to. All we've got to do is come to him. He says, come unto me, all ye who are labor and heavy laden. Yeah. And he says, come and die. Folks, there's no reason for us to be hungry today. There's no reason for us to be famished today. There's not a famine today. God has prepared the table. Yeah. He's prepared the table for you and I. And notice what he says. You know, he says he doesn't get fatigued. And no, he says he, he, he does not, fainteth not. He says the, the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not. Neither is he weary. Weary. I, I don't know about y'all, but they sometimes... My, the, my, my britches drags my tracks out. Yeah. Not that they're hanging that low, but just, I'm just that tired. And I'm weary. But thanks be to God that he doesn't slumber, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't get weary. You and I, folks, they, you know, we don't do some things sometimes because I'm just bone tired. And you'll never hear him say, I'm too tired to answer you. He said, I'm too tired to do anything for you. You know what he'll say? His ear is not heavy, nor is his arm short. He wants to hear from a child of God. He said, no, now notice what he said. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't get, he doesn't get tired. So what does that mean? He, again, he's the God of creation. He created all things. And God said, and God said, Genesis chapter number one, he nine times and God said, and now nine times, and it was so. And when he created you, and by the way, he created you. You wasn't, you wasn't a, a, an accident. You wasn't by some explosion. You wasn't by, by some mistake. You were created by God. And God loves you today. And God wants a relationship with you today. 
And, and when he said, he, he's God, he created you, does that, is, is he not bigger than anything that you and I could ever face in this world? Any problem that you and I could ever have, is he not bigger than those things? For he created you. We just need to go to him. We get our eyes on him. And I've said this many times, and I'll probably say it many more times. We get our eyes on him, and he'll get much bigger. We get closer to him, he'll get much bigger, and our problems will get much smaller. So he says here, God, he said he doesn't get tired, he doesn't get faint. But don't you say, when that, that next verse, let me read this one again. Verse, verse number 29, he gives power to them. So he gives power to the faint. And to them that has no strength, or, or excuse me, Scott, my eyes are getting a little bit watered. He said, and giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. In other words, no strength, no, no power. Have you ever been that way? Just felt like you couldn't make another step? Just felt like, felt like you just couldn't go, not another inch. He said, I'll give you power. And he's talking about two different persons here. He's talking about uh, the, uh, Isaiah's giving us two different persons here. He says, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. So he's telling you and I there's two categories here. If we got God and we got us. I've got news for you. The world will tell you that you are a God. That you are your own God. I'm here to tell you you are not. You are a creation. You are a creature. God is the creator. He's the creator. So he's talking about two different persons here, two different categories. You got God who is omnipotent. He's all powerful. And you got God who's omniscient. He knows. Folks, don't think he doesn't know about your broken heart, Brother Sammy. Don't think he doesn't know about the tears that you may shed in the night that nobody else will see. God sees those tears. He knows. He just wants you to come to him, realizing that you can't have it, but he can. He can. And not only is he omnipotent, not only is he omniscient, he knows. He's omnipresent. Hallelujah. I love those omnis. And I'm not talking about in Atlanta. I'm talking about in heaven. That's God. He's omnipresent. What does that mean? He's with you. He's in all places at all times. That means he can be with me and he can be with you. We can be in, de we can be in different places and God is there. Hallelujah. Amen. And Isaiah is simply telling you and I that God, he is, he is infinite. He is everlasting. He is, there, there's no end to him. And we are people, I'm talking about his creation, his his, uh, the creature here, we're finite. We're finite. We have an end. But we don't have to if you choose Jesus. See, he who has eternal life will give eternal life to those who call upon his name. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see, that's what he wants to do. He, not only does he want to have a relationship with you and I, those that have maybe walked away, those that have maybe have grown cold upon God, maybe those, if you're here this morning and you never had a relationship with Him and God may be drawing your heart, today is the day of salvation. And He's just simply telling you and I that you got one perfect and the other's not. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you which one's perfect, but I am. That's God. So that leaves the other is not, and that's who? That's us. But one day, we sung about heaven. Oh, we sung about Beulah Land. We sung about all. Folks, one day we will be where we're not today. We need him. I love that Beulah Land. Our faith is going to end in sight one day. We're no longer going to need it. But I need it today. You need it today. What do we need it for? Folks, we need to get through today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And notice what he said here. He said, God, he, he's never stressed. Does anybody here ever get stressed? No. 
Sometimes I think I'm the poster boy of stress. Anybody here ever carry your family on your back? The burdens of your family? Some, they get heavy. They get heavy. God never gets stressed. He never gets overwhelmed. Our kids are going to go back to school on Wednesday. Can I say some of them is going to be overwhelmed? So much information trying to, trying to get in at one time. That's tough. That's a tough thing to do. But yet, God is faithful. He never gets overwhelmed. He never gets stressed. He's immortal. He's always been, and he'll always be. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's our God. That's the very one who says, I love you this morning. You know, God has given you a love letter, and it's got 66 books in it. 66 books, and it's a love letter written to you. It's got red in it, too. He shed his blood for you and I, and he said he never gets overwhelmed. But he, he says this thing, <laughs> this thing of stress, and I, I know you, stress is tough. You know, stress can make you sick. Stress can, can make you physically sick, and it can make you mentally sick as well. But what is this thing of stress? Why is it that you and I, that you and I, that we deal with, that, well, that we have so much stress on us at one time? Well, what is it? Well, it's that gap. Has anybody here got a to-do list? You got a to-do list that you wrote down? Everything you need to get done. And you begin to look at that list, and you, you, you realize that list is bigger than you. Then all of a sudden that list gets so big, not, not because uh, of, of what's there, it's our inability to do the things that's on the list. So what's stress? That's that gap in between what we've got to do and our ability to be able to do that. And that in between that, that's that stress that just wears us out. But God wants to help you with that. He says that stress. Anybody here ever have... Demands put on you. Oh my goodness. Now I know nobody here has got responsibilities except every one of us. We all have responsibilities, don't we? And we all have demands. And these things that comes at us, God says, hey, listen to me. He said, what I'll do, he said, I'll give you the ability to be able to handle those things. I'll give you the ability to be able to do those things if you come to me. If you'll come to me. And that thing of stress, you know what I'm stress to do? Not only will it make us sick, it'll make us weak. But you know what stress to do for a child of God? It makes you an easy target for the enemy. It'll make you an easy target. Have you ever watched those nature shows? What is it that the lion gets? It's the weak. It's the slowest. You know, there's an antelope that woke up in Africa this morning thinking, boy, if I can't outrun the slowest lion, I'm going to be lunch. And there's a lion that woke up and says, if I can't catch the slowest antelope, I'm going to go hungry. He said, that's what it is. He said, this thing of stress here, this thing that, that, that we, you know what, there's a lot of times we put that on ourselves. We put stress on our own. And oh, I've got all these things to do. I've got all these things to make happen. But yet, that's not God's plan. That's not God's will. We ought not to have to worry so much with those things. He said that it makes us an easy target. It slows us down in this walk, this thing. You know, you're, has anybody here in life ever bothered you? Ever, ever brought you any trouble? Ever brought you? Absolutely. It does us all, don't it? We all suffer. We all have heartaches. We all have these things. But I want to tell you something. We all have got one that we can go to, that we can gain strength in times of trouble. Yes. He said, it'll make you an easy target. You know who's going to try to pick you off? Brother Scott mentioned him this morning. It's the old devil. He's going to misplace your car keys. He's going to misplace this, and he's going to misplace that. And he's going to give you every excuse not to go to the house of God. 
when we ought to be at the house of God. Amen. And I may mention that. I, please don't think I'm critical. I just want to tell you the truth this morning. There's a lot of things that's keeping us out of the house of God that shouldn't keep us out of the house of God. We ought to get our priorities straight. And start getting to the house of God. Why? Hey, it's a recharging station. It's a recharging station. Uh, hey, I, 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 I pray and I, Brother Scott, I, I, do, I, try to, I try to find the right scripture. I try to find the right message. But sometimes, folks, I want to tell you, I need a little help too. And I come. And sometimes during Sunday school, I get the help I need. Maybe in a song, maybe, maybe just in a greeting, folks. I want to tell you, it's important for you and I, folks, because you know why? Storms are going to come. Did you bring your umbrella? Shelby did. <laughs> Hallelujah. What does that mean? We ought to come prepared. They're going to happen. Yeah. It ought not to be why me, but how am I going to react to the news that I just got? Yeah. What am I going to do to glorify God? And what just I've been told. You see, the world is watching how you're going to do. They're going to say, well, they've talked all this talk. They've done all these things. Let's see how they're going to do now. God's able. Amen. He is able. One of these days, they're going to invent some waterproof contacts, and I'm going to get some. He's never overwhelmed. You notice what he said? He said... Those that are faint. Well, what is that faint? That, that means to, to be over, to swoon. To, uh, matter of fact, here, here it means to fly also. And he said those that are weary, those that are weak, that's just to be exhausted, to gasp, to have a trial. Folks, we all got that, don't we? We all suffer those things. And I want you to notice something here. Verse number 30. Youth, you're not excluded from it neither. He said in verse number 30, he said, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He, what's he saying there? Stress. He said, All these things, they know no age. We all suffer from it. We all deal with it. But how do we deal with it? We all, we all ought to deal with it by turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to turn to it. Folks, you know, school's getting ready to start. I know I, I, the kids hate to hear this. It's getting ready to start. It, you know what that means? You're going to have to get up early. It means you're going to have to study. It means, oh, my goodness, this is the worst part I hated about it, test. There'll be tests. But if you don't get up early, if you don't study, you won't pass the test. You know what God wants us to do, Brother Scott? Just exactly what you said in Sunday school this morning. Just exactly what Brother Sammy. He said he wants us to get up early. He wants us to spend some time with him. He wants us to pray. He wants us to seek him. He wants us to spend time with him. And if we do that, we'll pass the test. Hallelujah. He knows no age. But I want you to notice verse 31. He says, but they... Hallelujah. Who's they? I hope you can raise your hand right here. I hope you can say that's me. I hope you can say, oh, I want to be that one. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up, hallelujah, with wings as eagles. And they shall run and not be faint. Or not be weary. And they shall walk and not be faint. So he's telling you and I here. What do we need to do? He's first and foremost, he said, those that they that wait. He's telling you and I to wait. Can I give you some news there? It doesn't mean to be stagnant. That doesn't mean just to sit down, cross your hands and cross your legs and just do nothing. That's not the waiting he's talking about. You know what the waiting that he's talking about? He's talking about Beulah land, Miss Heather. He's talking about that land of marriage. He's talking about that bride that's waiting on that groom to come. She's not waiting. She's not sitting and waiting. You know what the bride's doing? She is wearing mom and dad out, getting ready for the wedding. 
Mom and dad's got to take her here. She's got to take her there. She's got to get this. She's got to, folks, she's got to get a lot of things. Hallelujah, I'm out of dollars. <laughs> Y'all get that. Whoo, thank God. Because they'll wire you out. Getting ready for the wedding. You see, that's the type of waiting we need to be. We're, you know what she's waiting on when, she, she, when she's singing about that beautiful land, that land of marriage? She's waiting, she's looking to, she's longing for that groom to come and the marriage to happen. That's the waiting that we're doing now. We're, we should be waiting, we should be longing, we should be waiting. You know what she's doing? She's waiting with anticipation. She's not, it's just not a, well, I hope he shows up today. No, she's ready. She's preparing herself. She's getting ready. You know what we need to do, church? We need to be preparing ourselves. We don't need to sit down. We don't, it's not time to, to quit. It's time, matter of fact, it's time, Romans says it's time to wake up. <coughs> high time to wake up. He, he, he just didn't say wake up. He said it's high time to wake up. Right. And get to work. Waiting with, you know what, not only is it waiting with uh, anticipation, but it's waiting with expectation. Right. It's going to happen. It is going, to, folks, he said, I'll go away and I'll prepare. He said, I, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. You know that. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, I go to prepare a place. He said, and if I go to prepare a place, I will come again. But he didn't stop there. He said, and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you be, that you, can I, I'll just put it in my turn, that you can be also. We'll be with him. And he's telling you and I here, he said, we are to wait with a purpose. We're to wait with anticipa anticipation. We're to wait with expectation. But then he says, he gives us some promises here. Three promises and we'll, we'll be done. The first promise here, he talks about flying in the storm. You know storms are going to come. Storms are going to happen to you and me. It doesn't matter. Folks, I'm going to tell you, if you're alive and Brother Tommy would have you do the breath test, that means you're waiting on a storm to happen. And they're going to happen here. He says, he said he's, he's going to, we're going to fly in the storm. He said, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. So when storms come, what does he want a child of God to do? He wants us to fly. Like the eagle. You know what the eagle does? The eagle loves storms. And can I give you what the eagle represents? The eagle is a type of swiftness. He's a type of swiftness. And that's why you and I, we ought to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Swift to go to prayer. Swift to go to the word. But he's, he's talking about the eagle here. And the eagle loves the storm. Because when the storm comes, he said, mount up with wings as eagles. So when that storm comes, and what happens? The wind begins to blow. And the harder the wind, the higher he goes. You know what that does for the eagle? It gives him far above the storm. The storm's still there. The storm is still raging. But the eagle's up here. And the storms of our lives, they'll still be there. They'll still be raging. But here, with him, we'll be up here. It doesn't mean we won't go through a storm. We can get above the storm. Now that wind's blowing. And Brother Scott, you know what that's going to do? That's that pep in the step. Can I give you another cliche? Winds beneath their wings. But that's kind of wrong. Yeah, I'm not an no aerodynamic uh, expert. But it's not the winds beneath their wings that they soar with. It's the wings going over their wings. It's the wind going over their wings that allows them just to soar. You ever notice that? They don't flap. They're not struggling. They're not, they're not trying to keep up. They're not, they're, they wire themselves out. What do they do? They're just letting that wind go. And the harder the wind, the higher they go. And he says... That's what we ought to do as a child of God. When storms come, when things happen, folks, and they will happen in our lives. You know what that ought to do? Okay, again, don't, don't, please don't think I'm critical, but that ought to draw us to the house of God, not away from the house of God. 
That ought to draw us to the people of God, not, not to separate from the people of God. Because them winds are going to blow. And he says, be like that eagle. Just stretch your wings. Just stretch them wings out. He said, the harder it goes, the higher you get. But you know what else that does for the eagle? Have you ever noticed you can't see much from the ground? We, we might have a few deer hunters in here. They like to get up a tree stand. Why? They can see better. But can I say, you get up high like the eagle. He can see a lot farther, and he can see better. And that's what we can do. And that, not, not of our own selves. You see, it takes the Lord Jesus Christ to do that. It takes him to be able to do that. And he says that we are to, to fly in the storm, those thermal drafts that come through. Lifts him up. Now, we live in a dangerous area right here, by the way, if you're an airplane pilot. We got some of them drafts that may not lift you up, but may push you down. You stay away from even though they got the dangers. Yeah, folks, you know what? This life is dangerous. You know that. I know it's not a shopper. But we, we're in this life. We are here today. Reality, folks, we are in reality. And what's he saying here? The storms are coming. Just get above it. You rise above those things. And notice here what he says. He says, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. That eagle couldn't get as high as what he could get without the storm. And you know what, folks? That just means when the storm comes, we can get closer to God. We can get closer to him. Yes. Folks, that's what he wants. He just wants us to get close to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, then the second thing, notice what he says, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. So what's he saying here? Well, it's not, it's not the storms that's bothering you here. It's not those things that suddenly comes up, but it's those deadlines that we place, not only that, that others place upon us, but we place upon us. He says to run. He says those things here that you and I may, we may try to do, what's, what's he really say? He said just be faithful in the little things. And if we're faithful in the little things, and God is always faithful, we'll learn to be faithful in the much, wouldn't we? And he says this run, and run the rush of life. Is anybody here? Now, I know, except me. Nobody here has ever had too much to do and not enough time to do it in. Right? But can I just go ahead and put that to rest? God has never given you so much to do that he hasn't given you the time to do it in. Right. God will always provide the time yes. and the ability. Don't worry about your ability. It's not your ability anyway. He says, he said, I want you. He said, God has never given us so much to do that he has not given us the time to do it in. We just make excuses sometimes. I used to give the effective range, teach weapons, and give them the effective range of different weapons. You got the M60 machine gun, that's 1,100 meters. You got the M203 uh, grenade launcher, that's 300 meters. You got different things. But you know what the effective range of an excuse is? Zero. It goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. He, he said here, he said, we need to run. Folks, it isn't the time. God's given us time. We just don't take it. We don't take it. And he said, we need to run. We need to run in, the, in, in this rush of life. Boy, it's going by quick too, isn't it? It's amazing how fast time goes by. Now, I know when I was 13, I didn't think I was ever going to get to 16. It never, never got there. But when you get past 30, you're going to blink your eye and be 60 before you know it. That's how fast time is. So he's telling us this time to, to run in the rush of time. And, and, and then he talks about, and you go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians tells you and I about the Christian walk. And, and Ephesians chapter number 6, six times 
Paul mentions the Christian walk. He tells us to, to walk with God. He tells us to walk worthy, to walk in love. He tells us to walk circumspectly. Just a few of them. But six times he talks about our walk. And that's what we're getting to next. We're to walk in the routine of life. That's the everyday life. That's, that's the everyday events. That, that's just what we experience every day. And, and you know, when are we going to fail? Are we going to fail in the midst of the storm? Are we going to just fall flat on the face in the midst of the storm? Probably not. Are, are we going to fail during, during the rush, during, during the running? No, he said the running, that's the happy time. We're not going to do that. When, when are we going to fail? When, when are we going to fall short, so to speak? That's, that's one of the favorites, Baptist's favorite terms. I fell short in it. And we do. And we do. When is it that we fall short? When is it that we fail? It's in the routine when we're walking. We get kind of lackadaisical in our walk. And he says, just walk in the routine of life. He said, be faithful. Just be faithful. And he says, I promise. He said, those who wait. Again, that's not a stagnant. That's just not setting and doing nothing. That's, that's waiting and working with anticipation and expectation. That's, again, like, that, that's that bright. He said, what is he going to do? He's going to renew you and I. I like being renewed, don't you? What happened to you when you got saved? You got a new body. Well, you didn't get a new body, but he made you new. You're a new creature. We're, we'll get a new body one day. Hallelujah. I think I've abused this one and wore it out. But I'm going to get a new one one day that I won't be able to destroy. Hallelujah. So he's telling, he's telling you and I that God will renew you and I. He's going he's gonna to give us a new life. He's, you, know what, you know what this Christian life is? It's, a, it's an exchange life. We give up the old for the new. He said, you're a news creature. He didn't say you're conformed. He said, he didn't say be you therefore conformed to this world. He said, be you what? Transformed. So that means you're something new. Hey, you might have been once that old ugly caterpillar that everybody wanted to step on, but now you're that butterfly that everybody likes to look at. See, that was a transformation took place. Notice what he said. He said to wait. That's to long for. That's to listen to him. David said this in Psalms 119 verse 12. He said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. We need to learn to learn from him. Psalms 104 27 says this, These that wait upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. He says, we need to look to God. You know, folks, what we need sometimes is a quiet time with God. Just along with him. Again, I appreciate our Sunday school. I appreciate Brother Scott when he opened up. Folks, that's every one of us needs to spend some time with God to get along with him. And you know what we're to do? Share what God gives us with each other, to encourage each other, to help one another. Folks, it's bad enough as it is. We don't need to make it no worse, do we? I love that song, Victory in Calvary. Folks, we've already got victory. Let's live like it. Hallelujah. We ought not to be all down and distraught. You've already won the battle. It's already been won. He says, we're to listen. Can I ask you this? We need to live for God. We ask God to give us strength, but why would he give us strength to go out and serve the devil? He gives us strength to go serve him. And look to him. We don't need to serve this world. We need to serve him this morning. And God needs to. Folks. If you haven't served him. If you don't know him this morning. You can call on him. You can be saved. You see. It's God that provides. He provides for you and I. So that. In adversity. In adversity. We can. We can soar. We can soar. 
And not only in adversity we can soar, but in opportunity. That, that's that rush of life. We can run. But also during the just normal things, the walk of life, the necessities, can I call it necessities? We can walk. And how do you walk? You ever watched a baby learning how to walk? Oh, they tickle me today. I love to watch them, but not, not that they fall, but the way they do it, they're taking one little step at a time. One little step at a time. So how are we to walk? One step at a time. That's exactly, how, how do you get up a hill? One step at a time. And that's exactly what God wants you and I to do, to take one step at a time with him. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to soar when the storms come? Are you, are you willing to run in the happy time? Are you willing to walk in the normal times? Would you stand? Heather, would you come? David? Ralph Stanley has a song. Most, most everybody's familiar with Ralph Stanley. and I love that song, Jesus Loves Me. And he sings, Jesus Loves Me. And he says, Jesus loves me, this I know, though my hair is white as snow. Though my sight is growing dim, still he bides me. Trust in him. Though my steps are sometimes slow, with my hand and his I'll go, on through life, let come what may, he'll be there to lead the way. He loves you this morning. When the nights are dark and long, in my heart he put a song, telling me in words so clear, have no fear, for I am here. When my work on earth is done, in life's victories, have been won. He'll take me home. He says he'll take me home above and then I'll understand his love. Jesus loves you this morning. He loves you. Every head bowed, every eye closed as they sing. If you're here this